Let's get started on your notes over parent functions. So a function family is a set of functions with similar characteristics and a parent function is the simplest function with these characteristics. So we're gonna look at nine different parent functions today and we're just going to identify some characteristics for each one. So the first parent function we're gonna look at is the linear parent function. And you're probably very used to this function. It's an odd function which means it's symmetrical about the origin. And I'm, I'm actually gonna put a little link up to another video that goes into even and odd functions in a lot more detail. But it's an odd function, so it's symmetrical about the origin. The equation is f of x equals x. The domain of this function, remember, domain is your set of all x values. It's everything from negative infinity to positive infinity, that's my interval, okay? All real numbers, and you can see I've got my arrow going that way out and that way out in both directions. My range is my set of all y values, and it also goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we're gonna talk about end behavior. What is this function doing on the ends? The ends meaning over here and over here. And when I'm talking about the ends, I'm referring to my domain. So in behavior, when I look at this right here, I read this as x approaches. So that arrow means approaches. As x approaches infinity, and remember infinity is over here, f of x or y also approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, that's over here, y approaches negative infinity. Okay, so as the x values get smaller, the y values also get smaller. We're going that way. And let me actually erase that part. Okay, moving on to the very last part of this function, our x and y intercepts. So this actually goes through the origin. So that or the origin is actually the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So now let's move on to your next parent function, the quadratic function. The quadratic function is an even function, which means it's symmetrical about the y-axis. The equation is f of x equals x squared. This is probably an equation or a function that you're used to. You probably remember it from Algebra 1. Your domain is all real numbers. It's from negative infinity to infinity. However, your range is restricted to everything above the x-axis, including the x-axis. So our range is from zero to infinity. Do we include zero? We do, so we need a bracket there. From zero to infinity. So remember, those brackets and parentheses are important when we write intervals in interval notation. So our end behavior, what is our function doing on the ends? The ends meaning we're looking at our domain, okay? So as x approaches infinity, as, x, as the x values get bigger, what happens to the y values? They approach infinity as well, right? They are going up. As x approaches negative infinity, what happens to the y values? The y values approach positive infinity, they also go up. Now let's look at our x and y intercepts. The origin is a key point in this parent function. That's our x-intercept and our y-intercept, zero, zero. Now let's move on to your next parent function, the absolute value parent function. Absolute value parent function is an even function, which means it's symmetrical about the y-axis. The equation is f of x equals the absolute value of x. Absolute value is always positive. Notice my y values are all above the x-axis because that is where my y values are positive, above the x-axis. The domain for this function is negative infinity to infinity. Just like that quadratic parent function, the range for the absolute value parent function is also from zero to infinity, and we're including zero 
because there is a point where x and y are both zero okay so the y y being zero is included in my range so now let's look at the end behavior what is this function doing on the ends as x approaches infinity and negative infinity as x approaches infinity y or f of x approaches infinity just like our quadratic parent function as x approaches negative infinity what does y approach f of x approaches infinity as well our x-intercept is 0 0 and our y-intercept is also 0 0 let's move on to the next parent function the cubic parent function The cubic parent function is an odd function, which means it is symmetrical about the origin. And the equation is f of x equals x cubed. Our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And what's our range? Also negative infinity to infinity. And this function, it just takes on this shape and it is always increasing. What does that mean? It means that as x gets as the x values get bigger, the y values also get bigger. So what is this function doing on the ends as x approaches infinity and negative infinity? Well, as x approaches infinity, what does y approach? Also infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, what does y approach? Negative infinity. So if that confuses you, as x approaches negative infinity, meaning as the x values get smaller, meaning we're moving to the left, what happens to our y values? They are also getting smaller. They are going down. So that's kind of how we write this in algebra two terms, basically, as we're looking at the end. So as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. Now let's look at our x and y intercepts. Our x, this goes through the origin. Zero, zero is a key point on this graph and it represents the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So let's move on to our next parent function, the square root parent function. So the square root parent function is neither even nor odd, and that is a possibility. It, we don't have to classify one as even or odd. It can be neither, meaning this function is not symmetrical about the origin. It's also not symmetrical about the y-axis. And the equation looks like this, f of x equals the square root of x. So we can see this function, we're restricted to x values only being positive. Notice that over here, in this part of our graph, that's where all the x values would be negative, but we don't have a function over there. We don't have our graph does not fall in quadrants two and three. Why do you think that is? because you can't take the square root of a negative number. You cannot have a negative x value and take the square root of it. So that's why our domain is restricted to all positive values of x, meaning our domain, let me make sure that I've got the draw thing open. Oh, my eraser, there we go. So our domain is restricted to all positive values of x, which means our domain is actually from zero to infinity. And it takes this shape where it stays in quadrant one. So our range is also from zero to infinity. And behavior, as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Now here's what's really interesting. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write here as x approaches negative infinity. X doesn't approach negative infinity. This is my endpoint for my domain, right? Zero, zero. So what I'm gonna say is as X, as X approaches zero, what does Y approach? Also zero. Our X intercept is zero, zero, and our Y intercept is the same, zero, zero. Let's move on to the next parent function, the cube root parent function. So the cube root parent function is an odd function, which means it's symmetrical about the origin. And the equation is f of x equals the cube root of x. 
My domain is all real numbers in interval notation. We write that from negative infinity to infinity. My range is the same, negative infinity to positive infinity. What is this function doing on the ends? As x approaches infinity, y also approaches infinity. It's increasing. It's, it's still increasing even though it doesn't look like. A lot of students really want to see like this kind of a look right here, like that's increasing. Even though you don't necessarily see that in this function, it still takes on that shape of where what makes it increasing as x values get bigger, y values also get bigger or increase. So as the x values increase, y values also increase. That's what makes it increasing. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Key point is our origin right here. So our x-intercept is 0, 0, and our y-intercept is also 0, 0. So let's move on to the next parent function, the exponential parent function. I love this next set of functions, the exponential, logarithmic, and reciprocal functions, because they have something called an asymptote in them, and we'll go over what that is. The exponential function is an odd function, which means it's symmetrical about the origin, and the equation is f of x equals 2 to the power of x. You also might see something like this, f of x equals b to the power of x, meaning I have a base. A lot of times you'll see b to the power of x, 10 to the power of x, e to the power of x, where b is a number that is greater than 0. So I do want to write over here just because you will see it this year, even though we're not going to go into it in great detail today. f of x equals e to the power of x. This e is just something you will see a lot this year. It's the natural base, e to the power of x. But if you ever see that, it'll take on this shape as well. This function is always increasing. It's restricted to quadrants 1 and 2. And our domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. But since the range is restricted to quadrants 1, or this function is restricted to quadrants 1 and 2, our range is from 0 to infinity. So the question is, do I include 0 in my range? This dotted yellow gold line that's on the x-axis represents an asymptote, meaning this function will never, ever, ever touch that asymptote on the ends. So 0 is not included in our range. So now let's talk about end behavior. What is this function doing on the ends as x approaches infinity and negative infinity? As x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0. Y will forever and ever and ever get closer and closer and closer to this x-axis, but it will never, ever, ever touch it. So why is that? I love this exponential function because think of all the values that you could plug in for x. You could plug in 2 for x. 2 to the power of 2. That's 4. That's why 2, 4 is a point on this graph. What about 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. That is a key point on this graph. 0, 1 is a key point on your exponential graph. But think about what if you plug in negative 2? 2 to the power of negative 2. What is that? Well, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4. So these negative exponents, meaning negative values for x, just yield very, very small numbers. In fact, they'll get infinitely smaller, but there's no value of x that you can plug in that would yield a 0 for a y value or a negative for a y value. There's no number which is why this function will get infinitely closer 
to this x-axis, but it'll never, ever, ever touch it. That's why we have an asymptote on this x-axis. So our x-intercept, we don't have one. It's not applicable. You can write not applicable or empty set. There's nothing there. Our y-intercept is 0, 1. There's that key point. Our asymptote is the x-axis. What's the equation for the x-axis? y equals 0. It's a horizontal asymptote. So now let's go on to the next parent function, the logarithmic parent function. The logarithmic parent function is also neither even nor odd, and that's okay. The equation looks like this. f of x equals log base 2 of x. You also might see log of x. And actually, let me write that differently. Since it's an equation, I need to make sure I write f of x. So f of x equals log of x. If you see something like that, it just means base 10. And you'll learn this as you get into logarithmic equations and functions more deeply this year in Algebra 2. So your domain for this particular function, your domain is actually, and as you can see, I've got this yellow gold vertical line right here along our y-axis. That's an asymptote. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that also means that our x value will never, ever be 0 because I have an asymptote there. Okay, So our domain is from 0 to infinity, and we're not including 0. So what am I going to put there? Brackets or parentheses? parentheses. Now our range is all real numbers, okay? So negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at what this function is doing on the ends. As x approaches infinity over here, what is y approaching? Infinity. What about as x approaches, wait a second, is x approaching negative infinity? No, x is approaching zero. As x approaches 0, f of x approaches negative infinity. Now, I'm going to show you something that's like super big time, and you'll probably talk about this more throughout the year, especially in pre-calculus, especially in calculus. As x approaches infinity, which, which direction is it approaching it from? Is it approaching, or I'm sorry, as x approaches 0 right here, is it approaching 0 from the right or from the left? It's approaching zero from the right. So we're gonna put a little plus sign right here. As x approaches zero from the right, that's not a huge deal in algebra two, but that is what that means. X approaches negative infinity. So this plus sign means it's approaching from the right. So our x-intercept, do we have an x-intercept? We sure do. It's at one, zero, and that's actually a key point on your logarithmic function. This point right here, 1, 0, is a key point. I might have said 0, 1 earlier. I don't know. That key point, that 1, 0, is a key point on your logarithmic function. So your x-intercept is 1, 0. Is there a y-intercept? There is not. And then your asymptote is the vertical line for the y-axis and the equation for the y-axis is x equals 0, which is a vertical asymptote. Let's move on to the last parent function that we're going to talk about, the reciprocal parent function. So this function is probably one of my favorite functions that I have worked with. It's the reciprocal function. It's also called the inverse function. So I'm going to write that aka inverse function and it's an odd function which means it's symmetrical about the origin and the equation for this function is f of x equals 1 over x so as you can see there's kind of a lot going on on this um, graph and i want to actually point out a few things before we go through this the first of those being that on this graph i do have two asymptotes. I have a vertical asymptote for a y-axis and I have a horizontal asymptote uh, 
that is our x-axis. And the reason I have these two functions being, or these two lines being asymptotes is for one, x cannot be zero. I can't have zero in my denominator, okay? Because I cannot divide any number by zero. So I know x cannot be zero, that does not exist. So I'm gonna have an asymptote where x is zero, which would be this vertical line right here. X cannot be zero, okay? So now let's look at the values that I could plug in for x and what y values they would produce. There is no value of x, and again, it cannot be zero. So if I'm plugging in positive x values, okay, or negative x values, there is no number that I could plug in that would yield a zero for a y value. No number. So that's why we have a vertical and a horizontal asymptote for this reciprocal or inverse function. And that's kind of hard to understand. But again, this is one of those functions that you will dive further into this year and kind of get to know it a little more. And it's one of my favorite functions. But let's move on to just the characteristics of this function. So the domain for this function is, it is a, um, an interval that is going to run from negative infinity to zero, not including zero, it's not part of my domain, there's an asymptote there, or zero to infinity. So I've got this interval that looks like this, right? And my range is actually gonna be the same. It's gonna be from negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity, okay? You might also see it, and I'm just gonna show you this because you might see it this way and it means the same thing. I write, I've written all these in interval notation and that's what it would look like, but your domain, you might also see something like this, all real numbers, but X cannot be zero. Range all real numbers, y cannot be zero. That just might be something that you see, but it means the same thing. So let's move on to the end behavior. What is this function doing on the ends? So as x approaches infinity, as the x values get bigger, why is this taking so long to erase? So as the x values get bigger, let's do this one right here. As x approaches infinity, y approaches zero, it's gonna approach that asymptote, okay? As x approaches negative infinity, what does y approach? Zero as well. Our x-intercept, do we have an x-intercept? We do not. Do we have a y-intercept? We do not. We have asymptotes that are our x and y axes. Now, key points on this graph, I have a little dot right here. One, one is a key point. If I plug in one for x, I get a value of 1 for y. Negative 1, negative 1 is also a key point on this graph. If I plug in negative 1 for x, I will get a negative 1 value for y. Our asymptotes are x equals 0, it's that y-axis, and y equals 0, it's the x-axis. And that concludes your notes over these nine parent functions.